is cells of the highest concentration of midichlorians I have seen in a life form. It is possible he was conceived by the midichlorians. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the force. You believe it's this boy? Bring him before us then. Hang on guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but the imbalance right now is very much in the Jedi's favor, right? We have, what, 10,000 Jedi in the Order? And we just found out that there might be a Sith. Bringing balance to the Force isn't going to work out well for the Jedi. <laughs> me if I'm wrong here, guys, but bringing balance to the Force is going to be really bad for all the Jedi. The Wand Makers are the biggest scam artists in the Potter universe. You don't need a wand to do magic. You never have. I've always been confused about the prophecy story arc in the prequels. Did nobody stop to think that maybe this is a bad idea? As I've already stated, the Jedi are benefiting from the imbalance in the Force on a scale of 10,000 Jedi to two Sith. In some ways, I think there was one member of the Jedi Council that understood the prophecy correctly and was aware of what would happen if Anakin was trained and fulfilled his destiny, Yoda. Besides being one of the oldest living Jedi, he normally was able to see things from various points of view and didn't jump to conclusions. It was pretty obvious that Obi-Wan didn't have a clue, even in Revenge of the Sith. When confronting Anakin for the last time, he says this. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. But that isn't anywhere near what the prophecy says. It says he will bring balance to the Force. In many ways, the Jedi got exactly what they asked for. It was either Anakin would train the Sith up to 10,000 members or kill all but two Jedi. But this isn't where it ends. In fact, it really does work into the original trilogy and beyond. In A New Hope, there are two Sith, Vader and Palpatine, and there are two Jedi, Obi-Wan and Yoda. Things start to change soon after the start of the movie, though, when Obi-Wan starts to train Luke. The Force is starting to become unbalanced. There's now three Jedi, even though one is barely a Padawan, and still only two Sith. This adds a deeper meaning to Obi-Wan sacrificing himself in the fight with Vader. He looks at Luke and realizes the meaning of the prophecy at last. He knows that by sacrificing himself in a fight with Vader, he is placing Luke to balance the power of Vader. This is evident at the start of The Empire Strikes Back, when Luke uses a force power that he has never actually been taught, and one that the audience hadn't seen at that point. He pulls his lightsaber to his hand. He has gained powers that he could not have known about before because his balancing point has been upgraded. Soon he goes to train with Yoda and learns there's a lot about the Force that he doesn't know, but he has access to. There's also a point at the end of Empire that, again, ties into the idea of a balanced Force, that being Leia connecting with the Force. Luke calls out to her through the Force and Leia hears him, turns the ship around, and rescues him. Her being connected to the Force and being closely tied to the Jedi ideals causes another imbalance. 
This gives an excellent reason why, early in Return of the Jedi, Yoda passes away. It could easily be that he's just reached the end of his life, but it might also be that he isn't hanging on to life anymore. Remember, he was the one Jedi that might have really understood the prophecy, and therefore understands that with Leia starting to connect with the Force, it's three against two again. It is also the only way that Luke could reasonably be expected to defeat the Emperor. He has to grow in power to be the counterpoint. More than that though, he also has to be relatively new to such power. Luke isn't as firm on what is and isn't allowed. He doesn't have centuries of beliefs and tenets making him second guess what he should do to end the tyranny so is more likely to walk on that gray area to accomplish his tasks. With the end of Return, it seems the Force is back to being very imbalanced, but that is something that the Force Awakens deals with. We find out there are two new Sith, and Luke has gone into hiding, and there are potentially two new Force users. Rey shows that she is very strong in the Force, making use of powers that she hasn't been taught, up to the point of actually being able to confront Kylo Ren. Kylo, on the other hand, is trying to complete his grandfather's work, which, just like Obi-Wan, he completely misunderstands. He thinks that Vader was supposed to wipe out the Jedi, which was his goal, but not his destiny. The Force seems to be relatively in balance if you look at Snoke and Kylo as the Sith versus Luke and Rey as the Jedi. We find out much more in The Last Jedi, however, and this brings some complaints about that movie into clarity. Much like Empire, we see a Skywalker child using a force power that we haven't seen, but it's not what you might think. We see Leia survive in the vacuum of space, it's not her pulling herself back into the ship that's the really amazing part. That's a force pull against a much larger mass without leverage. So of course, she's the one that moves, not the ship. It's her surviving and remaining conscious that is the really amazing part. Snoke even points out that Rey has grown in power as Kylo has trained and grown. She is the Jedi balance point to his Sith position. The problem a lot of people have is that Leia has grown massively in power without evidence of training. This is explained by Rey when she is spending time with Luke. He's cut himself off from the Force, so can't count as a balance point to Snoke. Leia's powers have grown, even though she may not realize it, because she has taken Luke's placement on the scales. This brings up an interesting point as to the end result of Snoke. If Leia has the power to survive in an unlivable situation, does Snoke have the power to prolong his life as well? This is possible, but beyond the scope of our discussion. Luke states that it is time for the Jedi Order to end, and even has backing from Yoda. When he wavers about destroying the text and ending the Jedi Order, Yoda does it for him. The Jedi ordered to end. Time it is. This showed how much Yoda understood the prophecy, the idea of balance in the Force. With the Jedi on one side, they have to have a counterpoint. If the Jedi Order ends, it's just possible that the Sith will also cease to be. This might not end the need for balance between good and evil, but there won't be orders dedicated to the extreme. Everyone has a certain amount of good and evil inside themselves. Rey is willing and able to kill, and is even tempted by the dark side. She is good, but she is not as extreme as a Jedi. 
Kylo, likewise, is willing and able to be good. He is tempted by the light side. He is evil, but not as extreme as a Sith. They both have a common ground and balance each other well. It seems reasonable that Yoda knew the only true way to end the Sith Order was for the Jedi Order to end as well. Destroy the orders that are teaching extremes and all you have left are people. Individuals that, on their own, are going to be gray instead of light or dark. In many ways, Kylo did help complete Anakin's destiny. He helped move the balance of the Force towards the center. In the end, Anakin had to destroy the Jedi Order to bring balance to the Force, and the Force has given powers to those that will help maintain the balance, or at least keep things closer to a balance than before. We even see that there are younglings that have Force powers, but there aren't institutions that will mold them into extremists. Without the Jedi saying, don't ever do this, there won't be people stepping back and saying, why not? So what do you think? Do you think the prophecy has been fulfilled or is it just a reset that happens every so often? Do you think that the ending of the Jedi Order will help prevent the Sith from being a problem? I would love to talk about it. So leave me a comment down below, send me a Facebook post or a tweet and let's discuss it. As always, thank you guys very much for watching and don't forget to prod the subscribe button so that you can stay tuned for more from Olav Productions. If you wanna see some crazy and also lazy, then you should meet me and my friends. Even they use hyperdrive it, to reach hyperspace and travel at light speed. Now they never really describe what this is. Do they use the drives to act looking like a hunk of junk? The Millennium Falcon is able to outfly anything in the Imperial Navy. Won in a card game by Han Solo, it is 